it's probably going to be one of the most interesting videos that I'll ever make. Um, I've debated this whole entire topic and all of this against uh, every single LLM model about like 50 times just to make sure that like I'm not like uh, going to say anything like crazy, anything out there. Like I, I have debated this up and down. And then so here is uh, my presentation of these observations. And then so my hypothesis is very straightforward. My hypothesis is that concepts like entropy, energy, and the second law of thermodynamics are not intrinsic to physical matter, but are emergent properties of any sufficiently complex system where probabilistic decision-making, optimization, and information flow occur. These principles arise naturally in artificial environments that are structured with rules governing uncertainty, even without explicit definitions of physical thermodynamic laws. TLDR, Eli 5, essentially, my hypothesis is, is that uh, at least two of the laws of physics and uh, of thermodynamics are applicable within simulated environments, uh, and meaning that they emerge and they are emergent from the properties of the simulated environment, and uh, are that the simulated environment uh, it, it displays all of the laws of physics uh, in this instance. And then I can prove this via two very different uh, disparate uh, ways of thinking of this, but both using AI. And then so the first one is diving into reinforcement learning. And then so with reinforcement learning, very straightforward. I've gone into uh, lots of different like reinforcement um, learning mechanisms and, and algorithms, etc. before, right? I'll just run a general run in the background here just so we can see it come up and run. But essentially, the major uh, hypothesis that I have uh, established and, and um, known for a while is, is that within reinforcement learning, what you're doing is you're utilizing Monte Carlo and Gaussian probability algorithms to create a simulated environment. And then so this agent this Cuber agent in this instance, operates within this simulated environment. And this simulated environment can be anything, right? It doesn't have to be a video game. <laughs> and so I've branched that off into like lots of different areas, showing you how you can create simulated environments out of like even APIs. Like you can create like an API call and the API call itself can be a simulated environment. We can look at code like this that actually breaks that down, right? Where I've, I've done this and actually illustrated this concept here uh, for you. This is actually just using swarm algorithms uh, and uh, and Gaussian probability and Monte Carlo probability to do just that, right? To actually create uh, Gaussian probability environments and simulated probability. And then this is the Qbert code uh, for the Qbert game that we're looking at. And then within this Qbert game, it's very straightforward, right? So we're, we're defining our Qbert uh, environment. We're defining the swarm DQN with our Qbert environment. So we're we're defining the environment for the model, all the, like how, like this is what your environment is. You're an agent within the environment. You should do this. You can move up, down, left, and right, et cetera, right? So we do define some things within the environment. We define a lot of things within the environment. And this is what starts me getting thinking on this track, right? Uh, and then so how these models generally work within this is that uh, it's very straightforward, right? We use entropy. <laughs> and then so we use the second law of thermodynamics within this. And then so within this environment that is created, I use entropy to have the model explore the environment, or in this instance, the Qbert game, right? The model is utilizing entropy to make its decisions, to go decide whether it should go up, down, left, or right. That entropy is derivative of thermodynamics. Uh, it's essentially, I'm, I'm simulating, like thermodynamics is related to like hot and cold and heat transfer, right? And that's like really simplistically. And then I'm just simulating hot and cold heat transfer in this environment. And that's kind of what makes the agent move. Right. But so I realized and then after a whole bunch of attempts of doing this and putting these agents in these different environments and then creating kind of honestly like kind of wacky environments for these agents after I start figuring out that you can 
create these environments into anything, right? And then so I start creating like things like this, like this is a uh, uh, high dimensional computing swarm neural network uh, image generation model. <laughs> and so it will generate images via diffusion, right? And then it creates a diffusion image space to create the images and that's how it works. And then so I just define the, Im the image space for the images to create their images in the space, yada, 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 right? But the kind of the bottom line getting back to all of this is that this all applies back to this, the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics is applicable to entropy. And again, that's how I utilize and how I get the model to move or how I get any of these agents to move, right? Or to do anything is I'm utilizing entropy. And then so Again, this just the, the kind of the big breakthrough within this is you go through all of this code, you look at all of the code, everything that I'm defining within this environment. The one thing that I don't define within this and it clicks with me is I don't define entropy itself within any of this. Like I don't provide a definition for what entropy is. Use entropy and the model is using entropy and it works and I know it works just because it's the second law of thermodynamics, but I'm creating a simulated environment in this instance. I'm creating an environment that doesn't exist and then I put the second law of thermodynamics in that environment and it just works without saying the second law of thermodynamics should work in this simulated environment. And then so that makes me go, hmm, right? And then so that's kind of the first part and the first building block within this. Uh, the second building block within this, so as I note within my hypothesis, the second thing that I look to within this is the geometric Langlands program. And then so if you're not familiar with the geometric Langlands program, it's a, a model that is not 100% proven yet, right? And then so uh, for kind of ever now, ever since I was born, there's been uh, people have wanted to figure out the unifying theory of physics, right? If there's the grand unifying theory of physics, what, what unifies um, uh, quantum theory and classical physics together, right? And, and no one can do that. But there's about 10 years ago, uh, the theory comes out, the geometric Langlands program. And the geometric Langlands program is not a grand unifying theory of physics, but it is a grand unifying theory of mathematics, which is uh, like a, a rung higher than physics, right? Uh, and then the geometric Langlands program has been dissected for, for a while now. It's essentially like the geometric Langlands program, it, it, the uh, proof, the mathematical proof of it is 10 papers, 10 research papers is the mathematical proof. So it's, it's like hard to, to dissect in and of itself, right? Uh, and it's, I, I can't prove to you whether or not this theory is true. I don't know. It would take me a lot of time to prove whether or not it's true. But so what I can do as an AI researcher is I can assume that this theory is true or false. And then I can do research and make observations based off of the, that evidence, right? Off of, okay, I'm going to assume that this theory is true. I'm going to set up experiments. Here's my observation based off of that. I'll assume that the theory is false. I'll set up experiments. Here's my observations based off of that. Very straightforward, right? I still can't tell you, I still can't give you a mathematical proof that's better than the geometric Langlands program that will prove to you that they have created the unifying theory for math. But I use their math, I use their framework, I do it in things, it works in the assimilated environments. <laughs> that's all I can tell you. And then so when I couple geometrics Langlands program, I can do things like code in the second law of thermodynamics or code in uh, ent like energy would be the, the secondary example and where I'm getting into this, right? And then so that leads us to the third example, which is Lagrangian math mechanics or Lagrangian mathematics. And then Lagrangian mechanics is uh, a uh, area of neural networks and AI that is currently being explored to as a possible replacement for transformers. And the good thing about uh, Lagrangian mechanics is that it learns super fast. Like it's the opposite of uh, current models, right? Where like current transformers where you have to just soak them in data and then it takes literal months. To, to for the model to to take in data with uh, Lagrangian mechanics and, and a Lagrangian neural network, it, it's quick, instantaneous, right? 
And that's what we're looking at here. And this, this notebook, a majority of these are Lagrangian neural networks and Lagrangian mechanics. <clears throat> and then so this is interesting here, right? And then so this is what gets me started on all of this. And then so this is my first iteration. First test I want to do is just explore uh, Lagrangian mathematics. And then so in this instance, I set up a very simple uh, equation uh, and then an optimization equation and then a very, very simple uh, Lagrangian neural network. And then I define an optimization problem, and I have it solved the optimization problem. And then what I notice within this is that this loss rate is very good for uh, the amount of simplicity within this particular neural network. Uh, it might not look like it, but this is, to me, a, a very simple neural network. And this is a very good loss rate for a very simple neural network. Like, it's below one, right? Which is, like, I, I wasn't expecting anything below one, or maybe even anything near one. Like, if it was, like, a three or a four, I'd have been happy. Uh, and then we're ending at 0.4. Uh, that's pretty good. So... I was like, huh, okay. So just playing around with this, I decide I want to play around with it more. And then so coupling these concepts, right? At this point, I have a, a very firm understanding at this point of Gaussian probability and Monte Carlo probability and utilizing them to create simulated spaces at this point. That's kind of like my, my shtick, right? And then so I'm playing around with simulated spaces and then I create a simulated space uh, for this neur this Lagrangian neural network. And then I utilize, uh, have my AI, uh, my AI geometry I create the simulated space, load the model into it, teach it what AI geometry is within this simulated space, uh, and then let the Lagrangian neural network go. And then what we get here is uh, essentially like off the charts loss rates, just flat out. And that's like uh, why I'm highlighting this here. Uh, we go from a 1.13 uh, down within 20 epochs to down to 0.2701 uh, and then 90% accuracy on uh, the graphics uh, pr uh, recall. Uh, precision, uh, and then about an average of 85% accuracy across the board on all these met metrics, which is baseball, science and space, and uh, talks politics in the Middle East. So just like random subjects, and this tiny, tiny Lagrangian neural network is just doing work <laughs> on these things, right? Uh, and then so I do it, and I expand it more, and then I do more and more tests within this, and I find that, I mean, and this is the bottom line that I get to, right? Just highlighting this as the, at the end result. This is a lot of work. And then uh, kind of what I've been able to take um, Lagrangian neural networks to and the kind of my, my initial thought experience and why I got into this. But then so within this, I, by the point I get to here, I have to really figure out how the Lagrangian neural network works, right? Like what exactly it's doing and how exactly it's doing everything within this. And then how exactly it's working within this is it's utilizing energy. So again, it's utilizing another property of physics, right? And it's utilizing energy transfer. And then and it, what it's doing is essentially I am simulating energy transfer within this Gaussian probability space, within this simulated space. But again, so this is the key observation here that comes down to, I'm not defining how energy works, and I'm not defining how entropy works. I'm not defining the second law of thermodynamics, and I'm not defining the third law of thermodynamics, and it just works. Uh, it just, in this simulated world, in this simulated environment, I can use the laws of thermodynamics and then just put them into there, into my environment that I create, and this is what we get out of it uh, as a result. And then so to me, this is just pretty fascinating observation overall, which leads us to the hypothesis here. Concepts like entropy, energy, and the second law of thermodynamics are not intrinsic to physical matter, but are emergent properties of any sufficiently complex system where probabilistic decision making, optimization, and information flow occur. These principles arise naturally in artificial environments that are structured with rules governing uncertainty, even without explicit definitions of physical thermodynamic laws. Plain and simple. Uh, you can make observations from there. <laughs> I, like uh, Any observations from here aren't explicit within the hypothesis. Um, that's just what the hypothesis is, laying it out there. Um, here it is. That you can disprove it. If you'd like, I'd be cool too if you can't disprove it. Um, but so if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.